there's circumstances that happen that were out of your control and mm -hmm. that doesn't mean it's bad that you're asking for help that's yeah. why we are here that's why i love what i do yeah um is i want to help people i want them to feel encouraged and that seen and loved mm -hmm. i mean that's really the goal we want to empower you to make fully informed choices about your pregnancy and parenting options let's talk about what's next now that pregnancy has entered the chat Welcome back to the Pregnancy Has Entered the Chat podcast. We are so excited to have Ida on today. So Ida, if you would introduce yourself and give a little overview of your background and what you do. Okay. Hi, Chloe. I'm so glad to be here. Um, my name is Ida Shaw. I have worked at Guilford County WIC for 23 years as a WIC nutritionist. Um, I got my degree at Mansfield University in Pennsylvania in dietetics and nutrition. Um, and I started my career here and I'm going to end it because I love of it. So I work with pregnant women, postpartum, infants, children, um, and then breastfeeding moms as well. So Awesome. So we're talking about a topic today that might bring some anxiety for our listeners, which is healthy eating. Mm -hmm. And this is something that's so important for all of us, but becomes even more important when a woman is pregnant. So is there anything that you'd like to just preface to our listeners or say before we get into this topic? Yes. Um, I think immediately everybody wants to change everything in their diet you know and yeah there are things that we do want to change but i also just want to remind people that you know god, god created each of us very individually like and so um our bodies are all different and so there's not a perfect diet there is not you know a one way one you know one diet for everybody um and so for me and I think my you know coworkers, we really just try to be encouraging of like what we're trying to get people to do in those goals. And there's a lot of barriers. It's mm -hmm. not just a one way thing. Pregnancy is um, again, it's not it's not the same for everybody. And yeah. so that's one of those things that I think it can be stressful. And that is one thing I want to not have for people. Stress is very. Um, it's not good for pregnancy mm -hmm. for all sorts of reasons and yeah. that you know there we have a lot of things to overcome especially here in Guilford County like we're mm -hmm. really trying to have better outcomes um and we want to be a part of that in that and so stress is one thing I want to decrease I don't want diet and what you're supposed to eat during pregnancy to be part of that yes yeah, for sure. I think when pregnancy comes into the picture, there are so many things that women start thinking about and yes. it can become overwhelming quickly. So I it love that be. disclaimer yeah. of yes. don't be stressed. We're going to get no, through it together. We are. Give some tips, but um, mm -hmm. not feel like everything needs to change immediately because when you get pregnant, your whole world does feel like it's changing it, immediately. <laughs> yes, your body, food, how it tastes, you know, smells, everything. It's a... It's an interesting individual experience. And each pregnancy for people can be different. So yes. it's not even what you learn from a previous pregnancy. It might not be this pregnancy. So it is the Lord's sense of humor is in it sometimes. Yes, for you sure. Think you're like, I know what is going to happen. No, yep. that's not how it works sometimes. All right. Yeah. Well, we're going to get through it together. Mm -hmm. I'm really excited for Ida to be able to share her wisdom with us today. So... We may have some people listening who grew up in households where nutrition was not discussed at all and maybe healthy foods weren't readily available for them. And then we may have some people listening who grew up in super health conscious households um, that kind of also feel like they don't know where to start in balancing things and um, having all things in moderation. So as a nutritionist, what do you think people struggle with the most when it comes to maintaining a healthy diet? Um again it was it obviously it's gonna vary and based on what you just said mm -hmm. um and sometimes it has to do with the fact of the resources of having food in the house mm -hmm. sometimes there's food in the house but we have to take time to prepare it and yeah. you know there's a lot of things um so like specifically with pregnancy like the first trimester like you're not making huge changes and you're not you don't because you don't need to gain a lot of weight and uh, obviously everybody's heard the whole um idea of eating for two and mm -hmm. we have to really debunk that sometimes <laughs> it's like please don't do that <laughs> um because weight 
gaining too much weight can be very detrimental too. Um, it can increase your risk of gestational diabetes, which mm-hmm. can affect you long life, you know, lifelong, and it can affect the baby. Mm-hmm. It also um, increases risk of preeclampsia, which is high blood pressure, which also can be very scary. Mm-hmm. Um, for pregnant women. Um, So those are things that we're looking, there's a reason that there is a range that we're trying to meet, but we're trying not to like stress people in that too, to not not gain enough too. Yeah. Um, In that. So would you like me to go through just sort of like goals for each trimester? Yeah, that would be awesome. Let's do it. So like eating wise, um, you know, there's certain goals in each food group is what you're trying to um, meet again like every day is different no one eats the same thing every day well if they do I don't understand that because I, <laughs> I like food too much yes. to eat the same thing every day um, but in the first trimester like you're just trying to gain about one to four pounds it's not like a lot Mm -hmm. um in the second and third trimester you're thinking two to four pounds per month Mm -hmm. okay but again that is really based on what you weighed before you became pregnant and so that's what we look at at that very first appointment is you know how much someone weighs their heights you're you know using a bmi bad body mass index which that's a controversial thing we're not going to talk about today (laughs) but that's where we start with you know so um average you know regular old women that are normal weight um you're aiming to gain 25 to 35 pounds okay um underweight a little bit more 28 to 40 pounds Mm -hmm. um if you start overweight 15 to 25 pounds and then obese which is greater than 30 um for body mass index is 11 to 20 pounds so obviously we are looking it seems harder in some Mm -hmm. areas um but again that pre-pregnancy weight can determine outcomes in a lot of areas. And so we're trying to keep mom healthy and baby healthy. Mm-hmm. Okay. So thinking about first trimester. So, you know, we have our five main food groups. Obviously, we've all learned things about the pyramid. And and then it went to my plate. So there's all these things probably in everybody's um, history from <laughs> health class. Yep. From elementary school on to today and what everybody else talks about now. Um, but thinking about like fruits and um, dairy, it's pretty much the same mm-hmm. throughout the pregnancy. That does not increase. So you're looking for like two cups of fruit a day, um, dairy, three cups. And obviously that's not just milk. When I say three cups, that's cheese and yogurt, cottage cheese, those kind of things. So vegetables, grains, and proteins, we are increasing a little bit throughout Mm -hmm. those trimesters so with vegetables we're looking to start like two and a half cups then the second and third trimester about three cups Mm -hmm. whole grains and grains and we're trying to get people to move more towards whole grains because they are healthier that's what the WIC program provides um, as for that reason but um, it talks about you know like six ounces which a lot of people are like well what's six ounces and the best thing to do is depending on what it is looking at that food label Mm -hmm. Um, but we're going to increase that to eight ounces in that second and third trimester and then with proteins we're trying to do more lean proteins um and not as much um fried stuff Mm -hmm. um there but also not just meats but like you know beans eggs uh, you know nuts and seeds those kind of things too sometimes meats are hard to eat during pregnancy so mm-hmm. trying to think of those as just protein foods in general yeah so like going from five ounces to six and a half ounces again all of those increases are not huge mm-hmm. as you you know as i'm reading through all those things yeah. um but you know finding the balance Mm -hmm. like you're asking about like that's the hard part and those come you know for different reasons you know obviously nausea is one of those things that we talk a lot about Mm -hmm. um and so a lot of times i talk about you know finding things that smell good taste good and stay down (laughs) yeah and eat a little more of those yeah and then once you start feeling better working on the goals that i just sort of listed um for moms that are struggling financially and just do not have the resources at home, one, I want them to come see me at the yeah. wake office <laughs> so we can help them get food. Mm-hmm. Um, and we do, you know, have other resources that we can point them to. Um, each county has a ton 
of resources when it comes to food. And I think a lot of people don't realize it. Yeah. Um, and I know you guys are not just in Guilford County, but also in Forsyth. Yep. I have sweet friends at the WIC office in Forsyth County too. So I know that they are looking to help our moms and, yeah. you know, eat healthy. Yeah. Um, tell me some things that I missed that you think might be helpful. For sure. So that is so, so helpful, I think, for women listening to just say like, okay, my diet really doesn't have to change all of that much nope. from what it was before. I think mm -hmm. that diet during pregnancy is one of those things where we go, I don't even know what to do. What does my body need? What does baby need? There's just a lot of question marks there. So I hope that someone listening is taking a deep breath thinking, okay, it's just little in increases in that vegetable category and the greens category mm -hmm. and in the protein category. I think that is probably helpful for people. And we've been talking about the WIC program. And so do you want to just give a little bit of an overview of what you guys do in Guilford County? And then also, like, where is WIC available? Is it a nationwide resource or is it county by county? Just a little bit of an overview there. So WIC has been around since the early 70s. It stands for Women, Infant, and Children, which <laughs> that's who we serve. So yeah. um, there is more to that name. It's the Women, Infant, Children's Supplemental Program. It is a federal program, actually. Awesome. It is not just like a state to state, but um, each state does run it a little bit different. So, mm -hmm. you know, obviously we live close to Virginia, so we have those transfers. And so there might be certain things you can purchase there and not here. You know, they're little things. Yep. Um, but overall, um, pretty similar. But county of a county in North Carolina and it is available in all 100 counties. Um, you know, we have several offices, you know, um, locally it all is based on income mm -hmm. but also if families have any have medicaid pregnancy medicaid mm -hmm. um S snap you know there are things that we if they have went through those qualifications they automatically qualify for okay. if they do not have those we go by their monthly income mm -hmm. you know for the household um so that's what we look at first okay so you know there's times where someone might not qualify during pregnancy because they're working but afterwards you know they might not have short-term disability or that kind of things and we do have you know people that come on after they deliver so there are different um, situations in those areas so how it works they qualify we add them to the program for pregnancy is throughout the pregnancy we typically will see them at least one time if not two times during the pregnancy and what we do is we're assessing their growth their nutrition you know give them education we do a lot of education and then resources like resources are a big part of what we do and helping them find any referrals or anything that they need in those you know all sorts of areas it's yeah. not like just nutrition we're known for our referrals because we want people to get help in yeah. that way um so yeah so that's the main areas that we um you know how it starts with pregnancy awesome. and then when they deliver then we add the baby and we yep. sort of do it again and um but for infants they're on through the first year mm -hmm. and we typically see them every three months and then children they're on for a year at a time as well and we usually see them every six months unless there's concerns and then we might see them every three months as well so again assessing growth maybe iron levels lead levels um, and then assessing again their diet and how to make changes you know the goal is you know as healthy as possible that's yes. the goal not just okay you know yep. so that's what we're working towards um, and we talk a lot about you know everyday foods versus sometimes foods mm -hmm. and you know not making um, it's you know that moderation yes like you talked about yes yep. that is awesome I love hearing that because something that we try to do here at the pregnancy network is care for women holistically which you know because you partner with us and it's awesome that there are so many resources available to people in Guilford County but also like you said WIC is nationwide so it's something that's so helpful that we have these offices where women can turn to you and that you'll help them not just with the nutrition and not just with their pregnancy nope. but also with so many other things uh, throughout out their pregnancy so and beyond yes so what resources are your most common referrals or how does the WIC program work in getting those healthy foods in the hands of women okay so part of our program that I haven't really talked about is that we provide food okay okay so we are we 
call ourselves a supplemental program. Mm -hmm. You're not going to live off of what we provide. Mm -hmm. Um, When the program started back in the early 70s, the foods that were added were specific to when you're pregnant Mm -hmm. that you need a little more of. um, And then... very young mm-hmm. um you know so it focused on calcium and vitamin d um you know iron that's a big deal and when you do need more iron during pregnancy um mm-hmm. folic acid is another thing you need a little more of so those yeah. are two areas that we do sort of focus on a little more during pregnancy but those foods have then been ex- expanded mm-hmm. so we have uh, been able to increase to having fruits and vegetables which are really important um there's dairy there's protein there's whole grains so those things have um expanded and a few years ago the exact year is not in my mind at the moment That's okay. that we transition we used to have like these paper vouchers that you took to the store but it went to a card to make it much more easier more accessible um you had more options of what you could purchase um and with that came an app so you could scan items when you're at the store to figure out what is available i think it can be overwhelming uh, it's not always easy i'm not even going to try to say it is because mm-hmm. the store is a little different there's tons of products um and they also expanded to have organic options for families as well mm-hmm. obviously those food dollars of fruits and vegetables don't always go as far yeah. with organic but you have options um in that um during the summertime we also right now we have a farmer's market program that helps support north carolina farmers which i love um they get the people that qualify are pregnant women postpartum breastfeeding moms children two to five and so they get thirty dollars one time a year those that qualify um to go to our farmer's market to help you know the farmers and purchase north carolina grown fruits and veggies so it's a super cool time because they get that beyond what we already provide Mm -hmm. so um during the pandemic our fruits and vegetable dollars increased immensely and it has been super um it's been utilized and that was encouraging and i hope that it helped um solidify what the usda continues to do to help get healthy food in families hands that's awesome yeah it's so encouraging to hear that those resources are being utilized and also the cool ways the program is expanding like with the farmers markets that's awesome Mm -hmm. that we're able to support local farmers and I think women listening hopefully are like okay this is like good to know because I think sometimes we just don't know what resources are available in our counties and in our states and nationwide even so I hope that this is encouraging for someone listening just thinking okay if I'm struggling with what to eat or how to get these resources resources, uh, there's a place for me to go. And then the next question that I have is just, do you guys provide like food plans or is there like guidance on how to spend those dollars that are being given to women? Yeah. I mean, we don't necessarily meal plan for people Mm -hmm. like that is you know becomes more personal and definitely uh, over the years, because we serve a variety of families yeah. um, and a variety of different um, culturals. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes our food isn't necessarily as culturally appropriate just because this is where we are, mm-hmm. you know, and this is where we live. So um, we don't get that, you know, detailed, yep. I would say. You know, if they're having trouble purchasing items, you know, from our, you know, we're, we definitely um, work with them to try to help get them to utilize all of their food Um, because I do we do ask you know do you have trouble getting your WIC items Mm -hmm. do you have transportation are you having trouble at the store so we can you know problem solve some issues there as well you know technology is (laughs) technology there's also language barriers yeah like there's a lot of you know things that way Um, so yeah we do and beyond you know if even what we're providing or if they do not qualify for SNAP, you know, there are other things in um, locally. Mm-hmm. Backpack Beginnings has worked hard to where start working towards helping um, pregnant women because we know pregnant women have healthier, you know, pregnancies, they have healthier outcomes. And so with pregnancies, and so they, um, not only with their market at the actual Backpack Beginnings, they also have food um, banks at different offices in town here mm-hmm. in Green, you know, Guilford County. So there's areas, you know, and like big picture, Second Harvest has great resource. Like you can go to their website, fill out application, um, 
and you know they they will help point you to a local place um so locally like my son helps volunteer at a place in high point that they make individual boxes every weekend and um it's been interesting to see the number of families um that need those extras and Mm so yeah the area is really trying to help you know people that are in need um so it's encouraging you know food is important yeah it's important (laughs) it's important and we all need it and it's encouraging also that there's a variety of people that are accessing these resources like if you're in need of resources and you're listening like you are not alone and I think that that is takes away some of those like negative feelings that we could have around seeking out resources like these but there are so many people that are right there with you from all backgrounds um, that are accessing those resources so Mm -hmm. so you gave us an overview of some of the women's needs during pregnancy and before pregnancy are there some like things that you recommend that are just super easy to like grab at the grocery store or some things that you see women using their WIC dollars towards a lot again I try not to like I mean I give suggestions but I also try to make things I try to think of get people things that people can grab quickly you Mm -hmm. know especially if they aren't wanting to cook you know and i try to get people to pair things with pe- you know um protein so peanut butter so i was mm. just trying to say um you know peanut butter and apple or crackers things that are quick um sometimes when you're pregnant cooking the smell can increase nausea so people <laughs> don't want to cook um you know trying to pair fruit with cheese or peanut butter those kind of things that are a little bit quick um you know if you haven't you know can't think of something Mm -hmm. you know i also just try to stress you know like five to six small frequent meals versus like trying to just have three big meals sometimes you go too long without eating can make your nausea worse Um, also eating too much at one time um in that way so you know um trying to find quick things you know even if you make a full sandwich only eat half and save Mm -hmm. your other half for later things you know in that sense and that caveat you know deli meat has always been one of those things that people talk about you know what you know is it healthy is it not healthy should we avoid it during pregnancy um you know food safety is important when we're pregnant Mm -hmm. because your immune system is a little bit lower so we do have to think about that um and so with deli meat we do tell you to heat it you know, till it's steaming. Mm-hmm. Um, again, it goes back and forth. There's it, <laughs> there's different points of view there, but again, that's where we stand at the moment. Yep. Um, and people are like, well, I don't want it warm. So I'm like, well, warm it up, put it back in the refrigerator <laughs> for a little bit, you yep. know, and try to like help them think about it. But also like, um, you know, when you're eating out, trying to not do a lot of fast food, mm-hmm. high greasy processed food. I really try to encourage people to stay away from processed foods mm-hmm. and like quick meals that those, cause they're not gonna have as much nutrients and the higher fat usually does not help mm-hmm. nausea. Um, so thinking about just your basic foods, um, you know, I don't know. A lot of times they talk about staying on the outside of the grocery store, not going in the aisles, which that's not everything, but <laughs> thinking about those outside foods and just food themselves, you know, how they were created and eating them that way. Yeah. You know, trail mix is an easy thing too. And you can make that or, you know, um, personally, there's obviously you're not having any chocolate on the WIC program, but yep. <laughs> chocolate's okay. <laughs> um, so, you know, those kind of things that are easy to grab, you know, I'll focus beyond regular big meals, but trying with meals, having that balance of a little bit of everything, mm-hmm. um, you know, half of your plate of fruits and vegetables, a quarter protein, a quarter mm-hmm. grains and some dairy, um, you know, thinking about what your plate looks like and thinking about portion sizes i think portion sizes are probably the hardest thing for everybody um because we sort of go by what restaurants give us and that's not a good (laughs) good indicator of what portion sizes are um so and i you know if moms are really trying to figure out stuff i say met you know measure what you would put on your normal plate you eat from so you can visually see i'm not saying every meal just do it one time so you can sort of see what that's supposed to look like if you're not sure and lots and lots of water Mm -hmm. especially this time of year 
I really stress it because your body needs even more water when you're pregnant. Mm -hmm. So when you're just doing your normal and then it's really hot outside, all of a sudden they're at the doctor's office getting extra fluids. And I don't want that for people ever because that's just one more stress there but yeah lots of water you know adding citrus some lemon or lime if you're just cannot handle more water um you know it's important sometimes not drinking water while you're eating Mm -hmm. waiting between is important too sometimes that that combination isn't as tolerable um trying not to get a lot of juices i try to say you know add a ton of water Mm -hmm. keeps the sugar down saves money yeah because you're stretching the juice (laughs) Um, lots of ice, that kind of stuff too. Awesome. So what would you say to someone who is hesitant about taking advantage of some of those resources like WIC? So how I phrase it, okay, it's a federal program. Mm -hmm. We all pay taxes. There are seasons in our life that it's okay to ask for help. Mm -hmm. Um, Mom chooses to stay home instead of work. You know, there are times that you just need some extra guidance and that's Mm -hmm. okay. Um, I remember, sounds really long, 2008 when everything sort of crashed, there was families that have never used government assistance. Mm -hmm. Um, Unfortunately, they'd wait until the last minute. Mm -hmm. And it's a process. WIC, you can walk, I mean, you're not gonna necessarily walk in and get an appointment, but within a couple weeks, but that could be a long two weeks if you have no food at home. Um, But like other things like Medicaid, um, food stamp, SNAP, it can take 45 days. And so these people were destitute and had, you know, I think they were just hoping things would improve and they didn't. Mm -hmm. So I'd really try to encourage people. It's like, you've paid in. This is a season. This doesn't mean forever. Yeah. This is, you know, your, your tax dollars being paid back in a way, but also it's encouragement. Like, you know, you're getting extra education. Mm -hmm. I have friends that don't have WIC that, I'm not judging, but I'm looking at what their kids are doing and how they're eating. And I was just like, there's better and healthier ways mm-hmm. to help meet those goals, you know, and just how you feed kids. Like um, there's different um, encouragements that you need. Doctor's offices, you know, yes, they ask about nutrition, but they don't have as much time to spend on nutrition. Yeah. And that's not really their purpose. They're doing, you know, all the, you know, other health things that they need to be doing as a medical, you know, looking at how the body's working. Um, so, you know, there's those things, but I totally hear it. And dads, especially, I have a lot of dads that come and they feel, I think, you know, they're the provider and they feel like that was what they should be doing, mm-hmm. but that I, this is a season of life. And yeah. with having young kids, um, you know, that's usually the time in our life too that we don't have as much money in yeah. our, you're just starting a career. Yeah. And so you're you're just buying a house, all these things and you're trying to provide. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and there's times that there's circumstances that happen that we're out of your control. And mm-hmm. that doesn't mean it's bad that you're asking for help. That's yeah. why we are here. That's why I love what I do. Yeah. Um, is I want to help people. I want them to feel encouraged and that seen and loved. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's really the goal. And in the I get to hand you get hand you some food too. Yeah. Like to like help. Yeah. I mean, we serve a lot of families that they don't know the the outcome. Yeah. There, it really is. And that's one of the things that I love when I hear they've been here because mm-hmm. I know that they've had that encouragement and they're coming to see us. Mm-hmm. Um, dad might not be around. Yeah. And mom's trying to figure out how am I going to raise this child? Mm-hmm. And I want to help her help that, make that one less thing that maybe we can get through yeah. um, and educate her and um, show her the resources and also just give her, you know, some confidence Mm -hmm. and walking into doctor's appointments and advocating for themselves. A lot of times that I think people can be, women can be because of their situation that was not planned and um, sometimes there's guilt and shame in it Mm -hmm. that you want to say you're still human and we there's a better way Mm -hmm. and you know and we want to make it a happy (laughs) ending um because a baby is not not happy ending Mm -hmm. (laughs) is one of the most beautiful gifts ever Mm -hmm. so you know trying to in the midst of i mean i have people that come in they don't really want to be in their situation and Mm -hmm. so you want to help them 
and encourage them and not make them feel like it's all on their own. Like it's a community. Mm -hmm. There's the whole takes a village. Yes. There's a reason that it exists. Mm -hmm. Um, and we want people to not feel alone. Unfortunately, I think people feel more alone Mm -hmm. more than ever, whether we can point to social media or whatever everybody wants to point to, um, in general, um, selfishness (laughs) selfishness <laughs> I don't know mm-hmm. but we want we don't want to be that we want people to feel connected and to be able to ask and call you know it's like finding resources mm-hmm. if you call or go on a county website you are going to be like inundated and yeah. I think sometimes that is overwhelming too that people get like this fire hose of information when they become pregnant mm-hmm. you're handing them a packet we're handing them a packet they go to the doctor and they're like I don't even, I haven't even processed that I have a baby Mm -hmm. inside of me. And so you're hand, you know, but you're handed at them. So when they are at a place that can go back and refer to it or to know like, yeah, I could not hear everything when I was there. Can you help me figure this out now? Sure. Let's go back and find what you need, you know, find the next step and, you know, are there diaper resources? Are there car seat resources? Are there, you know, housing resources? Mm -hmm. All of those things that, can I fix it right the second? No, but I can try to get you to someone else Mm -hmm. and to the next person and to the next person and hope and pray. Yeah. We make a change and not all of the outcomes are like we like and not all of them, not everybody makes good choices. Mm -hmm. And that's probably, some of the hardest parts of my job is like you want better for someone than they want for themselves for Mm -hmm. whatever reason and I don't have the answers that has been probably my hardest journey you know of like you want more for them Mm -hmm. and you can see their potential and yeah I don't know that part is a hard yeah hard place that is tough but it is encouraging just to hear like even if you're not sure, even if you don't really know where to start, even if yep. you haven't even fully addressed what's, what's happening. happening. And that happens so much. I mean, we yeah. see women here who are facing an unplanned pregnancy or who are going to be a single parent or whatever their mm-hmm. situation may be. And we say to them so much, like, just, even if you'll be a single parent, you don't have to parent alone. Nope. Even if you feel alone, you're not. And there are resources and we want to come alongside you and help mm-hmm. you in any way that we can. Um, so that's just really encouraging to hear like it may feel like information overload it may feel like so much at once but that encouragement like take the step and just trust that you'll be met with compassion Mm -hmm. and with love and I think that takes bravery and it takes courage but women are strong and women are (laughs) capable of hard things and so Mm -hmm. I'm really encouraged by what you guys are doing at the WIC program and also just what the community and what our country offers as a whole yeah no I mean I think we believe in families you know and that's the thing I think it's just it's not obviously times have changed it's not your grandparents aren't living next door and they're at and so we have to be each other's family it might not be blood and so that's one of those things of trying to you know encourage people in the community to find community in whatever way um you and I know about community in our church and so why it's important and we see the blessings in that Mm -hmm. and you know that's the part is like committing to that and you even going and when you don't always want to you know that's part of it and um yeah yeah I think that's so encouraging to you of there are resources even if you don't have that community like at the Mm -hmm. pregnancy network if you're local to the triad we offer the connect program yes which just connects you to a woman in the community who's Mm -hmm. on a journey much like your own and is able to come Mm -hmm. alongside you and just say hey mom problems life problems i'm in it with you and like you said community is not always easy and i think that takes away some of the shame that we may feel and like man i really don't want to go to that play date or like i don't feel like going out to lunch with this friend today but going anyway and getting that connection that we all really need and that it's so essential just to um we're talking about fueling our bodies well like that fuels our minds and it fuels our Mm -hmm. spirits and we're not just one thing we're holistic people who need um a host of different things very much so no yeah well I'm thankful for you all and that you know helping our clients um and encouraging them you know and obviously 
referring to us too you know so and i've enjoyed also like teaching at for the infant feeding class Mm -hmm. at you know on zoom and um getting to meet lots of your clients it's been fun it really has um and again you see a community built there too it's like you know those moms are in the same sort of you know stage of life and you Mm -hmm. you see you're not just doing it on your own there are other people doing it too and hopefully they're making connections with each other too i hope that that is happening because that is where you can find some really good friendships and just for sure that family that might not be right next door Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. and if anyone doesn't know Ida's talking about we offer a parenting 101 class Mm -hmm. at the pregnancy network so it's available for all of our clients totally free Um, not only do you get awesome information from experts in their Mm -hmm. field like Ida but you get material resources yes. so that's diapers that's clothes that's so many different things yes. that um, part super cool i forget about that yeah <laughs> so that is an awesome resource and one thing we hear out of those classes all the time as we're talking about community is just i met people who were doing the same thing that i was doing and i think that can be so helpful and mm-hmm. like even if it is on zoom we've been doing some of those classes online just getting to know people and mm-hmm. being able to form those connections is awesome mm-hmm. So I have one more question for you, okay. and it is kind of something that we like to ask all the women that we have on the podcast, and it is, what, what is your why for serving women in the capacity that you do? Okay. Um, I love people. Mm-hmm. I do. I mean, the Lord put that in me. I get teary. I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> um, in thinking of the journey of who I've served over these 23 years, like, there's hard stories, really hard, but then there's these really joyful stories, um, and just to see outcomes and how things have changed and people come back and um it's not always easy like Mm -hmm. people are hard yeah (laughs) and sometimes they're mad (laughs) and you know you're trying to figure out the blessings I get in those interactions at times reminds me of you know how the Lord created all of us Mm -hmm. and how he loves us so well so the why is really you know Christ in me I mean for most but too I just love people yeah um and so that is one of those things so how can you not love babies and kids? So in this age range is my favorite. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that is my big why. Um, but you know, I want people to be healthy too. Not it doesn't have to be perfect healthy, but you know, seeing the needs and the changes. Um, and again, that's why I talk about sometimes foods and everyday foods because no you need french fries every once in a while you know that is not i am a moderation nutritionist wick nutritionist i am not like strict by any means and um i think you know helping people see the full picture of everything is important food is joy too Mm -hmm. you can share a lot of community eating together um and that's one thing I think sometimes is went away. So one of our questions that we ask every time is like, how many times a week do you eat dinner together? Mm-hmm. Because we've seen like as kids go to school, the ben- we've seen research say when you eat together, <laughs> grades are higher, which sounds, what are these two things? But there are, there's purpose, you know, there's questions being, there's conversations happening. Um, you know, so food is, everybody eats. It just, that's one of those <laughs> yeah it's hard sometimes because everybody's an expert because they all eat yeah (laughs) and they're not always an expert but you know that's but we all have that you know there's common grounds and um the diversity of foods and the things and cultural all the things that people can learn from each other Mm -hmm. i think you know just it might not even be different countries i mean i grew up in the north Um, there's things that i eat that people down here don't necessarily you know those back and forth um and just how we're raised in different um environments like you were talking about earlier so the why is really just to love people well um you know because i want my heart you know to be broken for the things that the lord's heart's broken for and Mm -hmm. to love people well yeah and that's that's such a beautiful explanation of why you work for the WIC program Mm -hmm. and why you love 
you love people because the Lord put that in you mm-hmm. and just getting to watch people grow and watch people make healthier decisions and offering them those resources in a time where you know all of us at one time or another really need some help yeah. um and so that is really awesome and i'm grateful for what y'all do over there and thanks. grateful to have you on the podcast today thanks so much for coming on thanks chloe for having me yeah